good morning, good morning. How many were rocking and rolling with the earthquake this morning? Anybody? I'm just telling you, that thing moved me in my office, not spiritually, but moved me literally. I thought there was a fight in the foyer, and I went out. To, I was going to go out to break it up, and my wife called and said she thought the house was blowing up. And I thought, oh, Lord. But uh, believe it or not, that was equal. That earthquake was equal to 40 million pounds of dynamite going off and spread out over an area there. It's, uh, so it started up in Sparta. And uh, I think it's the Lord just saying, wake up. It's time to get out of your jammers. Everybody out there. I have, thank y'all for writing me too on live stream who told me, said, man, I'm getting out of my jammers. I'm here. So if you're here, God bless you. I appreciate it very much. Appreciate all our California friends who sent us that earthquake just to let us know they're with us this morning. We appreciate very much. Uh, I'm going to ask Brandy to come and give you an update on something, and then we're going to pray. Okay, Brandy? Hey, guys. So last Sunday, Pastor Raymond made you aware of a need in our church. So Chris and Bethany Hallman, they have a one-year-old son, Jace, who... Um, is in dire need of a bone marrow transplant and things have been kind of hit or miss finding a donor they do feel like they have found a donor so there were three needs that we reached out and said we need your help uh, meals cleaning their home and helping with child care so thank you so much for those of you who have reached out and have given gift cards and have said i'll help i really appreciate it we still have a need that needs to be met, and that's child care. They have three children still at home. Uh, the schedule, Bethany even said as I spoke with her, it was three days a week, and she said, listen, we're desperate. If y'all can even help two days a week. So on Monday mornings, that would be 5 a.m. until around 1 to 5. We can even work in shifts. If you can say, I'll do 5 to 10. You know, I'll work with you. Just reach out to me. And then on Thursdays from about 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. So those are our two needs that we still have. Again, if you can help with any of that, just reach out to me and let me know. Thanks so much. Appreciate that, Brandy. Thank you so much. Let's pray together. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your presence here. We thank you for giving us the opportunity to come together to worship you. We thank you for all our family watching by live stream. We praise you. We ask that this day that we will enter into a time of worship, not to listen to others' worship, but to participate in worship ourselves, to be able to get our minds set on you, O oh God, because you are our hope. We do pray for uh, Chris and Bethany, Jace. We just pray, dear God, that you'll heal that young uh, man and just let him be well and carry on with his life. I praise you for those who are willing to help. I thank you for that. For those that are in here and watching that have needs, God, you know what those needs are. You're omnipotent. You're all omniscient. You know all things. We pray that you administer right now, even as you need to minister to each and every one of us and help us to hear, see, and experience your presence. We give you praise now and uh, glorify your name. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Come and 
Jesus is waiting. God so loved the world. Amen. Were creation suddenly articulate? With a thousand tongues to lift one cry Then from north to south and east to west we hear Christ be magnified Were the whole earth echoing His image
to sit here and list it out for everybody. I mean, we just had an earthquake this morning. That's crazy. I mean, it didn't, hopefully it didn't hurt anything or damage anybody, but there's so much to be afraid of these days, it seems like. There's so much that we could just barricade ourselves in our homes, never come out, never talk to anybody, not be friendly to anybody when we talk to them because we're so afraid that you're gonna, yo, you're gonna breathe on me. You're gonna get your Dorona on me. And as easy as it is for me to say these things of not being afraid, like it's instructions from God that do not be afraid. He says it so many times, I can't count it. He says it so many times, do not be afraid. And some people like me, I go through life and even if I'm afraid, you would never know it because I just have that. But some people, they, they have anxiety, they have fear, they have things that they deal with in their heart and in their mind. And so this morning, I didn't write this song and I certainly can't sing this song like Zach Williams, but I hope that this song will touch you guys this morning, touch somebody's heart, touch somebody's mind, and help them get past that spirit of fear. When it told you you're not good enough, when it told you you're not right, when it told you you're not strong enough to put up a good fight. When it told you you're not worthy. When it told you you're not loved. When it told you you're not beautiful. You'd never be enough.
Father, we thank you. You didn't give us a spirit of fear. You didn't come here and die on the cross for us so that we would be afraid. And I pray this, we go out into this crazy world, we would go out as lions. I try to teach my children to be lions, and I pray that you'd help us all to go out into the world as lions. Just keep us safe as we go through this week. I don't know. I like that kind of earthquake right there. That's my kind, worshiping the God. Amen? That's awesome. You know, the song Tara sang, Do It Again, and then that song that Zach sang and talked about fear, all of that can be real. You say can be. Yeah, because God is the same God. The reality, though, is unless we got our ears on, to hear what he's saying and the will to do what he's saying, you'll never see him do it again and you'll never experience a lack of fear. Fear will control your life. And uh, last week I started talking about how to hear God because God is speaking. He's still speaking today just as much as ever. And uh, I said I wanted to take some time and talk about how to hear God. And I uh, hope to do that in the up and coming weeks to help you hear more of what God is saying to you, to you as an individual, as well as us to a church. Uh, I used to uh, love uh, to go outside at night, I still do, but I used to go out there and I wanted to look at the stars and various things of this nature, but my head was so full of noise. Anybody know what I'm talking about? It was just like all the day's happenings were still roaring in my head and thoughts were flashing through and. Uh, the next thing, you, all I could hear was a, a plane going overhead or whatever. And I just, it was just like too noisy. And so I just, sometimes I'd just go back inside and sit until I could get my head begin to be clear. I found out though that when I got up early in the morning, you've heard me talk about this a lot. I go out on the deck out there, my mind's clear, I've rested, and I was able to be able to hear. I still though, realized that I was starting to think already about what was going to happen that day and everything that was going on. And so I began to focus with everything in me on God and where I was at that moment. It was amazing to me because the more I did this, the more I began to hear sounds I had never heard. I began to hear this chirping sound. That's the only way I can know to do that, croaking sound. And it wasn't long before I could hear two distinct croaking sounds. And I began to track them down with my hearing. And one of them was a gray tree frog. And he used to come and get up on one of the banisters there. And he'd just croak. It took me a while to catch him. And then I had another one, but it was different. So I started listening. I tried to find where he was at. And I listened hard and I learned him. And it was a green tree frog. Two distinct calls, by the way. He said, well, thank you for that uh, lesson. You'll thank me later. Reality is, though, I began to hear a screech owl. How did you know it's a screech owl? I listened to it, recorded that thing, because I said, i got to know what that is. Then I heard a barred owl. It, that was a different, different sound altogether, and I could hear them way off. And before long, I was hearing, rise the sun's come by. I hear what we call morning doves. You know how they'll, you've heard them. They're going, and I was hearing crickets. And then all of a sudden, I was hearing squirrels in the top of the trees singing to each other what they're doing. And I'd heard squirrels all my life, and I knew where they were, but I had never really listened hard enough to pinpoint them. So I guess I could sit there on the deck and listen to them and see them. And then I'd hear a distinct sound, and I saw where it was coming from one day. It was a hawk, big old hawk, about this big. And he'd just get up there listen to the squirrels singing, glad that they were singing for his supper. Uh, or his breakfast, whichever it was. Why are you saying all this? Because before long, I look forward to going out there and hearing everything going on around me that I had heretofore not listened to. I suddenly was no longer thinking about what's coming up next or what's coming up. I suddenly began to burst out into prayer through to God and praising him for his creation. 
And it began to move in my spirit, and I had actual worship right there in the morning listening to all those sounds. And then I began, as the sun came up a little more, I learned what a cardinal sound like and a wren sound like, and I could hear the flutter of their wings. And it was an amazing thing. I realized I'd spent a lot of my life and missed a lot of sound, a lot of voices. It's, it's that so. And so as I learned this, I found out now how to do this. I can go out at night now and clear my mind and get it focused where it needs to be on God. And it's amazing how even the nighttime can blossom out and testify to God just like the Scripture says in the Psalms. Your heavens declare your glory. They sing day and night. It's hearing it's hearing. Uh, I had to learn how to hear. And upon learning, I came to understand that a hearing ear can be developed. Even if you are deaf, you can hear if you know Jesus because the Holy Spirit turns on our inner ear, so to speak. I also know that there have been many things, as I said, in my life that I didn't hear and I wished I had heard and, uh, and if, I have, if I don't watch it, I realize that I'll also won't hear them now. That God is speaking all around me, and if I'm so tuned in, in my fear, or the things that are happening around me, I cease to hear him whispering to me his comfort and his peace. This being true, not just for me, but to all of us, imagine what a challenge it is to learn to listen to God. We substitute a lot of things, we'll do. We'll get up in the morning, read a book, buy somebody else on the things of God, or we'll turn on our favorite teacher or preacher on the TV, or we'll cut on a CD or whatever, or podcast, and we'll fill our head up with what somebody else is saying, rather than get with God and let God speak to us before we ever touch that book or that CD or that television and get in the groove there, we don't. And Jesus said to us in Mark 4, 9, he said, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. Let him hear. And I talked about this last time, 15 times in the New Testament, seven times in Revelation, and he adds what the Spirit is saying to the churches. For instance, in Jeremiah 29, 11, and 12, everybody's heard this verse over and over. People's wrote books on it and everything else. But Listen to what it says, because God spoke this a long, long time ago in a different place, in a difficult place, to people that he truly loved. And this is what he said. For I know the plans I have for you. This is the Lord's declaration. Plans for your well-being, not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. You will call to me and come to me and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Now listen, that may have been said a long, long time ago to another group of people, but they were people God loved. And God means for you and me right now that have turned away from our sins and trusted in Jesus Christ for our sa as our Savior and Lord to, and have thus become his sons and daughters, join heirs with Jesus, he intends for us to hear those words to us right now in whatever circumstance you are. Listen to me. He said it over in Ephesians 2.10. He said, we're God's workmanship created to do good works that he has created us from the very beginning. Here he says, man, I know the plans I have for you. Do you hear that and hear him speaking to you or are you just busy saying, well, is he talking to us or as a country. No, he's talking to you. He's talking to you as a follower of Christ. He says, do you, do you hear him saying that to you? Do you hear him to say that he's not out here to hurt you? He's not here to bring disaster on you? Do you hear him saying to you, I've come to give you a future and a hope? He's speaking that to you. Have you heard it? Because if you hear it and it gets down in you, you won't live in fear. You won't live in fear. Believers who have developed this kind of trust in, in God, as Jeremiah is talking about, through Christ, hear God speaking to them. 
And, and they open that up, and it's not just an Old Testament scripture that they have to want to get a commentary out and be able to teach it to somebody else. They want God through the Holy Spirit to teach them. And they hear him speaking to them no matter their circumstances. They begin to experience peace, a sense of peace, a sense of rest, a sense of victory in their lives. They see that God's promises are not just black ink on white paper. It is indeed reality. And they hear and begin to understand. And the more they begin to hear and understand, the more they begin to practice. And they practice what Paul said in 2 Corinthians 10, 5, where he said, take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. We begin to live in obedience to our Savior and not to the drumbeat of this world. This is living in and out of God's presence and walking in his light. The enemy will do anything he can to prevent that. And Jesus, our Lord and Savior, will do everything possible to help us, but we have to let him. The choice, you see, really rests with us. And a key to hearing God's promises is to begin to live out of those promises. Don't just memorize them. Don't just read them. Don't just underline them or color them, but get up and walk in them. Get up and walk in them. God says, walk in my, uh, my promises. What good is a promise if you never see that it works, if you never walk in it? He promises. He makes promises. Walk out of those promises. Sometimes we say we trust God and we believe God and we believe his word, but then we live and act like we don't. You can read Titus. He said there's plenty of people like that. But a change of behavior begins only with a change in thinking. What you allow in your head. And we've got to filter out our thoughts so that only those thoughts that are in agreement with God's word are allowed to guide us. And once we do this, it becomes much easier for him to speak to us. We had a great time here at CR on Friday night. It really was. And I, I had the privilege of sharing with the group that was here. And one of the things that I tried to get them to see that's true, not just to people who go to CR, but it's true of us. We believe more lies in our head than truth. And we've lived our lives. And some of us have been imprisoned by those lies most of our life. And that's the reason we act like we do and talk like we do and, and do the things we do because we're believing lies and not the truth. And I'm saying that if you begin to hear God and understand what he's saying, and make your thoughts captive in agreement with his word, you will find your life breaking free from prisons and from past things and beginning to live life like God intended us to live. And we do this by making first a deliberate choice and effort to set, to focus our mind on God. That takes some deliberate action. It takes everything in us to quit thinking about what this politician said or this doctor said or this video on Facebook said or this tweet said or this is what so-and-so texted me or direct messaged me or, or this is what so-and-so shared with me. It, it takes a lot of effort to get all that junk out of our head and focus alone on God. And we sometimes need to know we can ask God, help me to have a disciplined mind, and he'll help you. He began to help you and show you how to do that. But secondly, we make a deliberate choice to exercise our mind by focusing on him. We don't just ask him to help us focus. We actually exercise. We begin to think. I said last week that uh, Flannery O'Connor, when talking about prayer, said that the thing about prayer with her was her mind kept wanting to go fugitive. Well, that's how it is when we want to focus on God. No, everything wants to move our mind to run away as fast as it can. It'll go different directions. But we've got to make a deliberate choice. And the best way to do this is to have a regular time to pursue God intensely. When you're at your best and not rushed and not going around, where you can really and truly pursue him. Like any form of exercise, you may have to start a little low level, but you build and increase gradually your time that you spend actually focusing on nothing else but God and his word. And then thirdly, you carry this exercise of setting your mind on God 
into every area of your life. Folks, God is not a category to be pushed over to the side for Sundays or Wednesdays or whenever it is. He is either Lord of every minute of your life or he's not Lord. Jesus don't play that, I'll take one pound of Jesus today and maybe I'll take six ounces tomorrow. No, he's, he is the Lord of all your life and you got to take him in to every area. You do that by determining, by determining consciously to bring him, uh, bring every thought captive to God and to um, by immediately turning to God in all circumstances. And after a while, it becomes a spontaneous action, a natural reflex that's developed into a habit. I work with people all the time about work is focus on our mind. It's one of the main things that I do during the week is help people learn how to focus on their mind. And at first, you may have to do it every minute. You have to pull it back because it wants to run fugitive. But if you learn how to hear God and focus on him, before long, it's spontaneous and you don't find yourself trying to escape. In large letters across a gym wall, it said this, FIT. And it was an acronym. It said frequency, intensity, and time. And that an acronym, FIT, is a principle uh, for the development of any desired ability. I don't care what it is. Frequency, intensity, and time. And in this case, I'm talking about hearing God. You've got to do it more frequent. You've got to do it with intensity. And you've got to give it time. And this is what God is desiring us to hear. And this principle is essential for us to maintain our ability to continue to hear God. Paul tells us in Romans 8 that God's children, those who are his, bought by the blood of Christ, uh, are led by his spirit. And if the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, does not live in them, they're not his children. He says in Romans 8 verse 9, he says, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. So you see, I keep saying this over and over again because I keep running into more and more Christians who believe in God's got big scales up in heaven. If I can just do enough good things and outweigh my bad things, I'm going to get in. There are no scales in heaven. It is either you know Jesus or you don't. It's that simple. You, he's either, you've either trusted in him alone or you haven't. And if you've trusted in him alone, God, the Holy Spirit, comes and lives and dwells within us. Uh, and we must hear God if we are to live by the Spirit as sons and daughters of God. We've got to hear him. Romans 8, 14 says, For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons and daughters of God. And then so we get to be led. We've got to hear him. We've got to be able to hear him speak. Paul says in Galatians 5, 16, Walk by the Spirit and you will not carry out the desires of your flesh. How are you going to walk by the Spirit if you don't know what he's, where he's leading or how he's leading? You see, this is essential. Whoever has ears to hear, hear what the Spirit is saying to you. It, it's important for us to do this. The very fuel of spiritual maturity is a personal, continuous, vital loving relationship with Jesus Christ. That's the fuel for this. Believers who truly understand spirit, uh, scriptural concepts, scriptural truth, realize that hearing God is the one thing they cannot do without if they're going to live the Christian life to the fullest. You got to hear God. We, we have to be like the, uh, we, we don't want to be like the people of Israel. If you remember back in Deuteronomy, I think it's Deuteronomy 5 or somewhere around there, uh, 15, somewhere around there, um, the people said to Moses, you go hear God for us. Folks, God intends for you and me to hear him ourselves. To hear, our, hear him ourselves. And he has ordained pastors and teachers, preachers, to be able to know that same thing in their own private life and even affirm that, that very truth to you and me. Uh, and so when we listen to others, first as believers, um, we're making no commitment. You realize that, right? Somebody, can, I can stand here all day and I can preach or I can counsel you and talk to you and you can talk to others in here about what's going on in your life and they can speak truth in your life but it doesn't require you to make a commitment. We feel no responsibility 
and you know we don't, to act on what we hear. We can casually accept what we hear or reject according to our own personal desire. I've tried to speak truth into people's heart and mind, and it don't suit their agenda. It don't suit what they believe, and so they reject it, and it ends up going in a bad direction a lot of times because it's obvious what God's truth says in situations. And so we're making no real commitment to each other when we speak. I mean, look, you, you can hear this, and you may say, oh, yeah, that's good, but then you don't realize it don't really fit in to your agenda or your plans and you say, well, I just, you know, that's good, but no thanks. But when we hear from God himself, when you read it in this book, when you hear God, we have to make a clear-cut decision. It's one of two things. We either obey him or we disobey. There's no middle ground. We obey or we disobey. To me, we just, we can listen, I, maybe, I, maybe I agree. He don't agree with Pastor so-and-so that I really like. I think it's, really? Truth's truth, right? Biblical truth? Biblical truth is truth. Interpretation sometimes may vary on some things, but most of the Bible is pretty clear. It's pretty clear cut. Now, we've been made citizens of heaven. We're members of the family of God through the blood of Jesus Christ, and nothing is more important than learning to communicate with the triune God, who is our Father, our Savior, our Helper. And because hearing Him is so vital, God built into us a, a system that helps us concentrate on things that we deem important and allows us to ignore things that, we, that have little or no place in our value system. Man, I'm telling you, when I consider how great God is and His design for us, it blows my mind. I'm talking about, I, sometimes I'm just like, great day, God. You're, you're too great on the earth. How can, we even, how can we even come to know how great you really are? Uh, he built into our brains, folks, a function that constantly filters out unimportant information and focus on, focuses on what is meaningful to us. It, it is called in the medical and scientific field as the reticular activating system, RAS. Reticular uh, activating system. It's a piece of the brain near the brain stem, right back here. It is the very top of your spine right here. It extends up about two inches uh, up into your brain. Its diameter is about the size of a pencil. Uh, and it is the gatekeeper of all the information that's led into your conscious mind. In other words, it filters it out. Because if it didn't, your brain would be overwhelmed by all the information that your brain is picking up because your brain picks up every single piece. And, and God designed it to keep us from being overwhelmed. And that little bit of brain matter that we're talking about right there, two inches of stem, is responsible for filtering massive amounts of information that your sensory organs are constantly throwing at it, and it begins to select the ones that are most important for your conscious mind to pay attention to. And, and it is a powerful tool. God, the Holy Spirit, works in there. You know when he says, don't be, let the world squeeze you into its mold, but let your mind be transformed by the renewing, right? By its renewing. What's he talking about? He's talking about your brain, but it begins right there. This is how God designed things. This is, God is not operating outside of who you are. He's operating in who you are so that everybody has the same equal amount of opportunity in Christ to be used of God and live the same godly life. And this is how it works. Uh, it, there's positive focusing, positive focusing. Uh, for instance, for those of you that have been new mothers, if any of you have been new mothers, you realize when that baby is in that bassinet in your room, how I many of you mamas know that if that baby sighs, you wake up? I don't care how deep sleep you are, you wake up. If that baby's foot sounds a little scratchy sound over the sheet, you're up looking. You, you develop this mindset that you hear everything, and if you're gonna get rest, you know what you gotta do, right? You've got to move the baby out of the room because you're waking up every few minutes at every sigh, every moan, every sound. It's a positive filtering. Why? 
this is important. I have to take care of this. And a brain f- works that way. Uh, then there's negative filtering. When Janet and I fir- uh, first got married, we lived over in Mount Holly, and after about a year, we moved up to Stanley. Well, if you're familiar with Stanley, running right through the middle of Stanley is a railroad track. And we live just a short distance from that. When we first moved in there, that train had rolled through and the rattling dishes and everything in there, I thought, oh, dear Father, what have we done? What in the world have we done? We will never rest. But after a month, people, we'd have guests and they'd say, how do you stand that train? I'd say, what train? What happened? Your brain, right back there at that reticular center, is saying, we're filtering out, it's not important. It's the same thing for where I live now. Planes are flying over constantly. I mean, you can count them. 25 landing in the morning, 20, I mean, landing at night, 25 taking off the same path. I've even, I've got it mar- marked out. I've walked, marked their path. And used to, when I first got there, you'd hear it every time it flew over. Now you have to just kind of stop for a minute and realize that there is a sound of a plane. What is that? Negative filtering that begins back here. It's saying that's not important so I don't have to hear it. Positive is this is important. I've got to react to this. And then there's the individual perceiving. Have you ever noticed that five people can watch a wreck and you'll have five different stories about the wreck? Well, there'll be some similarities, but five people. We individually see and interpret things differently according to what we've already got filtering positively and negative in our brain. All of this is God's design. God designed that. He knew what he was doing. He knew how to do it. The Holy Spirit works within us and uses our eyes, our ears, our mouth, our heart. He uses our brain. He uses everything we have, and he's given it to us, and this is an important part of it. It filters out all the unimportant uh, stimuli, and it focuses only on what is important at the moment. That's what that whole RS uh, does. Once you've made a distinction in your life that something is valuable, that some thought, some idea, some sound, some picture or feeling is significant to you, you've determined this is important to me, then that reticular activating system is alerted so that whenever that thought or that sound or whatever occurs, your brain says, this is important to you, and you react to it. It immediately transmits its information it receives regarding that significant, important item, and it sends it right to your consciousness. When you decide, now what's this have to do with us? When you decide that hearing God is of vital importance, when you decide that it is your means to life, you need to hear from God, you need to be in his word and hear him speak, then that RAS RAS center starts putting God through whenever he speaks via Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit says, Pink. okay, it's morning. Guess what's important? Not Fox News. No. Sorry. Not looking at Facebook. No. Sorry. Not looking at Twitter. Twitter. No. Sorry. Not going to do it. Not, not going to do it. Uh, what we're going to look at? No, no, no. We're looking over there on Instagram. No. 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 What, what are we doing? Word of God. Word of God. Prayer. Word of God. Prayer. Word of God. Prayer. It works that way. The Holy Spirit will begin. You begin to hear God when you make it vital. You make it vital. It's just the way you're wired in that sense. Uh, and, and you have prompt things to respond. Uh, it alerts us to things regarding the world as we hear our, our, the Lord Jesus Christ speak. It's a picker and a chooser as a conscious. The Holy Spirit using it as a conscious. It's how the Holy Spirit convicts us. It's how the Holy Spirit convicts us of sin, of wrongdoing. It's how the Holy Spirit begins to move in us and say, this is the way you need to go. And therefore, even in the scientific world, that reticular activity activating system is called the guardian of the mind. Who are you going to let control that? Your flesh, the enemy, or are you going to let the Spirit of God in you? 
This is the world we live in. This is the reality that we are. You, you know why you always are negative and why you always respond to negativity? Because somewhere in your life, you've determined that's the most important thing to, ke to keep. And so every time a negative criticism or anything comes up, that's where your mind goes. Bing, i got to hear this. But if you start valuing the positive truth of God and the Word of God and His promises, you begin to find your mind transformed from that negative kind of thinking even to a positive. Like I said, change, positive change, comes when you change here through the power of the Holy Spirit. And so this system records everything and will concentrate your attention on whatever you have previously determined in your thought processes and your emotional processes as being important. And it, you'll be led in that direction. If God's word of vital importance to you, then that system is going to send all the messages that come to you, that come to you from him to you. You're going to realize, this is God speaking. I've got to spend this time. Two-way communication is important in any relationship. In marriage counseling, I spend most of my time trying to get couples to learn how to communicate. They think they are, but they're not. It's a two-way relationship. And since hearing is half of all communication with the Lord, just like it is in those relationships, you've got to learn to hear. You know? I mean, listen, those of you who are married, have you been in a conversation, is this the way it goes sometimes? You're listening to your spouse, and all of a sudden there's a word or something that's said, and it triggers you, and all of a sudden you start building your defense. The whole time they're talking, what are you doing? You're sitting there thinking about your response. When the moment you started thinking about your response, you stopped listening. You hear what I'm saying? You stopped listening. Now you're, you're getting ready for your opening, even to interrupt, to be able to cause an argument. And that's the reason arguments happen, is because people don't listen to what people or other people are saying. They react before they hear it on something that person ain't even said. I've had to stop people and say, wait a minute. She didn't say that. Huh? I said, she didn't say that. Why are you attacking? She didn't say that. Shut your mouth, man. Listen. I can be direct. <laughs> because this is essential to have a, a loving relationship. We do this with God. We're, we're, we're praying, we're speaking, and also we get to listen part of what do we do. We start thinking, well, you know, I better get ready to go to work or i got to do this. We just cut our brain off. And God is saying, I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you. And so it's important. The Lord created you, and he saved you and me to fellowship with us. It's not that he just saved us, and we're going to heaven. Now we can live any way we want to. He wants fellowship with you. He wants fellowship with me. He wants to spend time with you and me. He wants to be able to do that. And you were called through God's faithfulness into fellowship with Jesus Christ, his son. But fellowship is impossible without communication and that, that uh, communion, if you will, with God. God's voice, you've got to let him speak from within you so that you can begin to hear with your ears and listen to what he's saying and obey. Until your value system... Listen to me very carefully. Until your value system, your set of priorities, is so alerted to the things of God that it, become, that it becomes your number one priority, you're not going to hear him very well. Because anything that's more important will get your time. Anything that's more important will be where you move to. Having you hear him is so important. God's equipped you. He designed you with his two-inch reticular activating system. He, he designed you with, that's God's design. That didn't just occur. That's God's design because he desires us to be able to, to, to be in communication with him. But if, you, if you're developing a, 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 a hearing ear by tuning into his voice, Hearing God's got to be a top priority of your life. Now, up where this, her, this uh, earthquake happened just a little bit ago, uh, Janet and I were privileged enough to go up there 
up in that Piney Creek, Sparta area for a couple of days. It's a beautiful place. It's lovely. And I just, I could just ride all the old roads up there because there's just beautiful mountains that are up there, rural areas, pastures full of cattle. As you get up early in the morning, you can just hear them mooing, man, they just mooing back and forth and, and, and going on and you'll see deer everywhere and there's bear up there that you're always on alert for. Uh, in, the, in the fall, it's the pumpkin capital world, I think. I've never seen that many pumpkins on the side of a hill in my life. And there's rivers that are flowing and people are, are kayaking and everything. And it's, it's just a beautiful, beautiful place. Uh, and I, I really, really love it. I love to see the churches, the, the smaller churches, perched up on a hillside up there. Uh, we were up there the other week, they were meeting outside. And so they were all out there, you know, with their lounge chairs and they were listening to the service and, and participating. Uh, but one of the things I understand is that if, if you live in that area, if you're not careful, you take for granted all that's around you and they lose their splendor. I noticed that when I talk to some people who live there and I mention certain things, they just look at me kind of puzzled and then they say, oh yeah, they, I, I know where that old place is. You, you, you know, when you, when you live somewhere and you just kind of take it all for granted, you, you begin to lose the splendor of all that you have. You can do that right here in Gaston County. You, you can do it right here. You, you, you look around you and you've got a situation and you just take it for granted. So to, take, to protect yourself from taking for granted that kind of beauty, what God has shown me through his word especially the reading the Psalms. When you see it, you've got to give expression to it. When, when you see the beauty, you've got to give expression to it. Uh, you've got to say something to somebody about it. You have to write something about it or just say something out loud. And, and the more you do that, the more beauty you'll see. If you followed me uh, last year on Facebook, I started a thing called View from the Front Porch. I was sitting on the front porch of my brother-in-law and sister-in-law's house there. It's a beautiful place. I just overcome by it. And, and I realized, God, how the psalmist, God used the psalmist to write down and preserve the beauty of who God was. And I found myself just saying, have you from the front porch? I had to express it. I had to, I had to get it out there. And the more I did, the more beauty I saw, the more I saw, the more I experienced. And it's that kind of thing with God. We could easily lose our sensitivity that things once were valued to us. You realize that some of you at one point was so fired up about Jesus, getting saved. Maybe you were baptized and you were so excited about knowing Jesus. But now, good trip comes along, good trip to a restaurant, good little vacation, something comes up. Well, a, you know, I, I think I'd rather go there. You know, it's just it's not, it's not as passionate. And so what we believe is somehow the things of God have changed. But it's not really the things of God have changed. It's us that's changed. It's us that has changed um, in there. As I said a moment ago, living near an airport or trains, you, you begin to uh, have that negative filtering being used and so what you don't want to hear, you don't hear. And so some of us just take for granted all that God has given us in his word, all the opportunities we have, even in worshiping together, and the support we have. It's, it's, it's not just that important anymore. And instead, it's just somebody that can move me down in here rather than God speaking truth into our life. But those who tend to walk slowly value the things of God. You know, it's like walking through the woods, man. You take your time. I, I was blessed. I had a grandpa and two uncles particularly. They, they kept me in the woods from the time I was little. I'm just talking about a little bitty boy. I was, I was walking in the woods. Uh, and I learned so much. I mean, I, I would bore you silly just telling you mountain medicine. Uh, it, it is an amazing thing 
how I was treated with Mountain Mess. We, we'd go in the woods looking for the treatments, okay? And it worked. They worked. But it's amazing to me how my grandpa could say, you hear that bird? And he'd tell me what it was. And it was an amazing thing. And, and suddenly, when I got a little older, I'd walk out there myself. And the more I walked, the more things that I discovered. The more I walked, the more I discovered. And when I began to share it with my grandkids, you know, they're, they're interested in that. Tell me about this. Tell me about this. Uh, it's there. That's positive focusing uh, in there. And I'm able to share it. The person who listens to God's folks and responds positively, you, you're in it. You're listening to God and you're responding positively. You'll hear more. The Spirit will speak. Now, this is not because God is speaking more to one person rather than to another, but it's because that person has developed a listening ear and they're listening to God. Have you ever been speaking to somebody and it was obvious they weren't listening to you? You ever, you ever spoke to somebody and you see them kind of looking around and, you know, kind of stuff, and all of a sudden you just get quiet to see if they even know she quit talking, and the sad fact is they don't? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Are you going to keep speaking? Nah, you're going to stop. You're going to stop. I just think God, you know, it's like asking God to fill you with the Holy Spirit. What for? It's like asking, you know, hey, Daddy, can you fill my car with gas? Why? You're grounded. You're not going anywhere. You know, it's, it's like asking the Spirit of God, fill me up. And he's like, why? You're not going to do anything that I'm asking you to do, right? I mean, it's that kind of thing. The more you listen to God and more you respond positive to him, the more you will hear. Jesus encourages us beyond measure to listen to him. He says, for whoever has to, whoever has to him will be given more. For that one who receives from him, he'll give more. That's Matthew 13, 12. And a few verses later, he explains a parable about the sower. Remember how it goes in verse 23? The one sown on the good soil, this is the one who hears and understands the word who does produce fruit and yields some 100, some 60, some 30 times what was sown. God says, you want to know the secret to success in living, it's hearing and understanding my word. Hearing. And that begins with you and God. It's that powerful. Now, if you want to be able to respond properly and develop, you've got, first of all, you've got to be, a, you've got to be purposed in your response. I, I mean, I, it's almost like a hardness has settled over the church. And it, it wouldn't surprise me because God says, let judgment begins with the house of the Lord, that maybe some of the junk that we're experiencing is God saying, wake up, you know, this is real, I'm real, and I've got a plan for you. You need to get busy about what I'm doing. I don't know. He's looking for that. But it's not from a lack of hearing truth. We got more preachers on the air and more books that are out there than you could ever imagine and podcasts and everybody's listening to all of that coming around. It is, uh, it, you know, we, we talk hearing about church in whatever form we get it. We get it from the popular media. It's always out there. And it's become almost performance. I mean, if, you, if you're on, tweet, on Twitter, you find out that a lot of people will say what they're saying. They're giving you s snippets of a book that's coming out. And they want you to buy the book. It's performance. And the result is that it's a hard heart on our part that no longer hears the Word of God. You see, the worst thing you can do, the quickest way to become insensitive is to ignore the Holy Spirit in you who may be impressing you to move in a certain direction. And then there has to be a positive response. If you're going to develop a hearing ear, you've got to give a positive response to what we hear from God. What's that mean? It means I'm going to, I'm going to begin to do what I'm hearing God say to me. When he says, don't fear, I'm not going to say, but you don't know what I'm going through. I'm going to say, okay, God, I'm asking you to help me today because I'm going to step out here and I'm going to step out in faith, not fear. And there also has to be a negative response in your hearing. As we develop sensitivity to God's voice, we've got to, we've got to stop responding 
uh, insensitively and, and, uh, and become unresponsive to the world's values. The Bible says, don't let the world squeeze you into its mold. Don't keep listening to your sinful flesh. Walk in the spirit, Paul says, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. The flesh is always telling you to do what the spirit doesn't want you to do. And so we listen. We've got to be negative in that. Out of their wisdom in, Psalm, in Psalms and in Proverbs, it says, happy is the person who does not listen to the wicked, who does not go where sinners go, who does not do what bad people do. Or how about John, as he counsels us in 1 John 2, 15, don't love the world nor the things of the world. And he goes down in verse 17, he says, the world's passing away and everything that people want in the world is passing away, but the person who does the will of God lives forever. You see, it's about that relationship with Jesus Christ. And so by deliberately ignoring the impressions of the world as much as possible, we can train ourselves to lose awareness of its spiritually unhealthy distractions. Because how many of you know the world bombards us with its philosophy? And it, it's getting worse even now. This is what success looks like. This is how you do it. This is what goes on. And, and we've got to practice ignoring. That's the reason I'm saying some of you, you fill your whole life with what news media says or what somebody else is posting, a video or whatever. And you wonder why you're all stressed out and, and, and about to lose your mind. It's because you filled yourself with that rather than the things of God. Because here's the truth for you. This world belongs to God and there's nothing going to happen on this world that doesn't fit into his plan for the end. He knows the end from the beginning. And the reality is that we get all up in the air as if everything is dependent. And the only reason is is because our own safety and security is threatened. But God's in charge. I'm telling you, he's in charge. He's got us, come what may. Whether it's terrible times or not, we've got to begin to do this. And we've got to also have an increased response. That means we've got to keep responding to the Holy Spirit. And then that should be practice out. What's that mean? Well, if, if the Lord places a person on your heart, you ought to call that person. You ought to text that person. You ought to let them know you're praying for them. And, and be able to let them know that you're thinking about them. It's a powerful thing. If the Lord tells you to, you need to spend some time here with your child or your children, spend some time with them. There, there's a reason behind that. If the Holy Spirit guides you to see a truth in Scripture, you ought to write it down and then respond very carefully begin to respond physically. This is what I mean. Some of us read the Word of God according to, well, that's a nice verse to read. I'll memorize it. Or this, I can't wait to lay this on so-and-so. Right? We always read it for somebody else. We read it to prepare a Sunday school lesson. We're reading it to prepare your message rather than what it says to me. So when the Bible says, forgive others even as I have forgiven you, do you hear that right now or do you use that for somebody else? You see, some of us, we read that and it doesn't apply. But it don't apply to me because this is my situation. Yeah, it does apply to you. Yeah, it does apply. Do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. Is that God speaking to you? Do you hear him speaking to you on that? Or is that just for somebody else? He didn't say, be kind to those out there uh, or do unto others as you'd have them doing to you, if they already doing good things to you. He doesn't say that. He says, treat them like you'd want to be treated. Is that, is that God speaking to us, or does that just apply to somebody else? You see, I'm afraid we only hear. My wife says I have selective hearing. Can you believe that? <laughs> Are there any other men here that's been accused of that, having a selective hearing? She actually looked me in the face and said, you, you only hear what you want to hear I said, what do you mean? She said, I've been asking you about that garbage over there forever. And I said, Dad, gum. I said, I told you I'd get to it. She said, when? Next week? <laughs> this is how we do in church. We listen what the, the scripture that makes us feel good about ourselves. We like it. But a scripture that comes up and says, forgive others even as I've forgiven you. Mm. Do unto others as, I, as you would have them do unto you. Mm right? 
love one another as I have loved you. Uh-oh, that's not, that's not good. You don't know what they've done to me, really. You know, it's interesting. I would challenge you to go back and read today, John 11, the story of Lazarus. We read that story, but I wonder how many of you have ever heard God speak to you in that because you're there. You're there. I'll just give you one example. Lazarus in a tomb. Do you realize that every single person in this room, even if you know Jesus, at one time you were dead in your sins and your trespasses and without hope, according to Ephesians. We've all been in that tomb. And who calls him out to life? Jesus. Jesus is the only way you're alive. That speaks to me. But if you notice that when he comes out, he says, loose him and let him go. Why do you say that? Because he came out still dressed in grave clothes. Folks, if you really listen to God in there, let me tell you something. Some of you are going to hear this. Not all of you, but some of you. God will speak this way to you. I've already given you life. I've saved you. I've forgiven you. But you're still wearing your grave clothes. You're still wearing the grave clothes from your past. You're still walking in the grave clothes. And you're not living very well. So, so what would he be saying to me? He said, to others, Lucy, you need other people who are believers in your life. We need each other to grow in Christ and to break free from our past and live the Christian life. That's the reason there's no lone rangers in the Christian faith. None. This is it. Have you seen yourself? Have you ever read that passage and all of a sudden you realize, man, God, I'm still wearing grave clothes because to me, being a Christian is just going to church and going home, going to church and going home, going to church and going home, going to church, yeah. And it's just that. But have you saw yourself? Are you still playing with the past? I can't tell you how many people I've met who are struggling in their life. They've been Christian for a long time, but they're still operating out of the past, still wearing the grave clothes. You see, God is speaking, folks. He who, she who has ears to hear, let them hear. Is that you? You see, for some of you, Jesus has been wanting you to hear John 3, 16. You, ain't, you still ain't heard. For God so loved the world that whosoever, that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And you've not heard that whosoever is you. And God whispering and saying, when are you going to let me forgive you? When are you going to let me call you out of the grave? When are you going to let me give you life? When are you, when are you going to let me give you meaning to life? When am I going to be first in your life? And if that's you, I hope he's speaking. I hope your ears are on, that you can hear him, and that this day you will respond. There's some of you that are back what I talked about on Wednesday, the cleaning of the temple. The temple's not a building, folks. It never will be again because Jesus made the temple you. If you're a believer, you're a temple. And Jesus cleaned the temple out because he can't abide, abide the uncleanliness in that temple. He run the stuff out. And we prayed a prayer. And I'm going to lead that prayer in just a moment for those of you that are believers to allow God to clean your temple out. So we need to take a step of salvation. Sons need to clean this temple out. Some of us just need to make a commitment and say, you know what, God? I'm going to start letting your spirit activate me where it needs to be, where you're first in every area of my life, including my job, and, my, and everything don't revolve around that. Will you do that? I'm going to ask you to stand as we pray together here. I hope you'll... You'll pray to and ask God to speak to you, give you a disciplined mind, and let's bow our head and pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you so much. I praise you with all my heart and all my soul. I'm asking you, Father, that you might be able to help us as we gather here to get our mind focused on you. Not on where we're going to go or what we got to do or anything of that nature, but, but just to get focused in on you I'm praying God that if there's somebody under the sound of my voice right now that does not know you as Savior Lord I pray Father in Christ's name that you would let them have ears to hear 
your spirit calling them to leave behind, to leave behind that old mess in their life and, tr and tr just trust you as Savior, Lord. Help them right now, Father, to quit making excuses, quit and just trust you to see that there is nothing in all the world more important than to be in that relationship with you and experiencing forgiveness and, and be able to bring their failures, their addictions, and everything else as we sang earlier and lay them down at your feet and washed in the blood and be set free to be your child, your son, your daughter. And I ask you, Father, right now just to help them to hear your voice and respond. And if that's you, respond positive. Just pray this way. Jesus, I, I'm, I'm bringing all my failures, all, the, all my uh, uh, habits, hurts, hang-ups, I'm bringing them all. I'm laying them down before you, Lord. And I, I'm quit hanging on. I'm asking you to save me. I'm asking you to forgive me of all my sins. I ask you to come into my life right now as my Savior and as my Lord. And help me to let others know that they can help me get rid of these grave clothes because I am free and I want to be free. You tell him that. Thank you. Let somebody know right here in this place before you leave. Let them know. For those of you who are believers, you know, listen, are you willing to let Christ enter into your life in that sense of cleaning out your temple? I mean, some of us got a lot of junk built up in here. We really have, and I'm not going to preach that sermon in my prayer, but I'm going to ask you if, if you're willing to let God have his way in your temple, your life, just, just pray, pray th this way. Just begin to pray and ask God to help you and, and see what he does. Just look to him right now. Just look to him and, and you, you just tell him, you know this. Just tell him, say, Jesus, there's some things that I've let creep back into my life. There's some things that I'm struggling with. Maybe it's some emotions. I don't know. You tell him. Maybe it's some, a relationship. Maybe it's a circumstance. Maybe you've got anger that's out of control. Maybe you're dealing with lust. I don't know. You tell him these things. Tell him, I'm having trouble with this. Is it self-pity? Is it finances? Is it been that you've just not served God? He's not been first in your life? Just take it to him right now and just say this. Jesus, you know what's in me. You know what's you know what it's there. I know what's there. And Father, instead of hiding from you, I, I come to you this morning and admit I don't have the strength that I'd like to have to just let go of all this junk in my life. And so I come to you. Jesus, your power as your temple. And I ask you, Jesus, come in now and drive out those things that make me unclean before you, that hinder me from serving you and hearing you. I recognize your forgiveness of all my sins, even as a believer, and I choose now to walk in it. Tell him, I'm walking in it. I'm recognizing your power. I'm recognizing it right now, Lord. I'm anticipating and I pray that you will get glory in me and I'll listen. I'm wanting my ears to hear what you say. I commit myself to you. I recognize that and I pray that in your name. Now, Father, I pray. I can't look into nobody's heart and see any decisions, but I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that there's not a one of us in here, Father, that doesn't need that chance to be able to, to come clean. There's some who needed Jesus, who needed to turn from their sin and trust you. Oh, God, I thank you for even one that's willing to say, yes, I'm turning away and I'm trusting Christ for my salvation. And I pray, dear God, that you'd help us surround that person and help them with their grave clothes. I pray, dear God, for every person that's willing to let you come in and clean out their temple. I'm praying that we'll get our, our focus right, that we can represent you in this world as you deserve to be ripped. God, hear our prayer. Let revival begin right now in our midst. And let us walk out of here with ears ready to hear 
what you'll say. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I love you folks. God bless you. I hope you hear God today. If you would like to be able to receive information on updates and things that are going on here at the Heights, you can go to theheightsbelmont.org. Uh, at the bottom of the website, you can enter your email information, and that will put you on an email chain where you'll be updated with things that are going on. Again, we want to thank you so much for being here. We're asking that if everyone could exit as quickly as possible so that we can prepare for the next service. Again, thank you so much for being here, and God bless you.